The female ghost has a terrifying face and a thin figure. However, with a casual roar, she can break the arm of a person nearby. What's horrifying is that the male lead has intimate contact with the woman. It turns out that the woman is possessed by an evil spirit. However, under the influence of the evil spirit, the priest cannot control his desires and violate his professional ethics. The priest's name is Peter. It all starts with an exorcism ritual. On a late night, Peter was asked to help with an exorcism. However, as soon as he arrived at the door, he felt a strange sensation. The young girl possessed by the demon is named Mary. She is restrained on the bed, but the physical restraints cannot prevent her from doing evil. Under the control of the demon, she becomes hideous, and she can break someone's arm with just a glance. Her low growl can attract followers. The doctor is concerned that the girl's body won't be able to support her for too long. So, Peter immediately calls Father Holt. They had already submitted an exorcism request to headquarters. Holt has now obtained the authorization for the exorcism. However, he won't be able to return for two more days. Peter feels that the girl might not be able to hold on. So, Peter decides to perform the exorcism immediately. Holt reminds Peter. Peter hasn't even passed the basic exorcism assessment yet. If he performs the exorcism alone, he might lose his life. He must ensure that he has no guilt hidden from God. Otherwise, his faults will be exploited by the demon, and the exorcism will not succeed. Peter is well aware of the risks of exorcism. However, if he waits for two more days, the girl possessed by the demon will definitely die. In the end, he disobeys orders and immediately carries out the exorcism ritual. Peter asks the girl's family members to wait outside. He must document the entire process. Then he holds a cross in his hand. He recites prayers against the devil. The devil doesn't feel fear. It even uses the girl's body to tempt him. The girl unbuttons her shirt. Peter awkwardly turns his head away. He sprinkles holy water on the demon. The demon seems to enjoy it. Peter rebukes the demon. But the demon flirts and says, If you come in, I'll leave. The demon becomes completely absorbed in Peter's prayers. Until the last moment. She lies exhausted on the bed. Peter thinks that the exorcism ritual has been successful. But as soon as he approaches her, the girl grabs his hand. She took the initiative to kiss. Peter doesn't resist. But in the midst of their intimacy, Peter suddenly feels something strange in his body. His face instantly turns pale. His pupils gleam. In a flash, 18 years have passed. Peter has been living in this place all along. He usually plays with the children in the orphanage. Lately, many children in town have been mysteriously getting sick. There is a shortage of medicine in the hospital. They can only place their hope in faith. Peter suspects that the disaster may be related to the previous exorcism. He plans to confess voluntarily to the bishop in the Mexican region. The sins he committed during the exorcism. He takes out the recording tape from the exorcism years ago. However, the bishop is not interested in these things. He is more concerned about the contributions Peter has made to the town. The humanitarian aid that Peter applied for has also received a response. With this money, there is hope for the children in the hospital. As a result, he has gained the respect of the people in the town. Although the bishop did not inquire deeply into Peter's mistakes, but Peter still feels guilty about the exorcism. At this moment, a scream suddenly comes from outside. He goes to check, but he finds that Jesus on the cross has disappeared. He follows the bloodstains on the ground. Peter sees a man hiding in the corner, crying. He tries to ask the man, but there is no response. When he reaches out to touch the man's shoulder-length hair, suddenly, a terrifying face appears under the long hair. Then Peter wakes up from the nightmare. On that day, the nearby prison asks Peter to come and help. It turns out that a prison guard had two fingers bitten off by a prisoner. The prisoner seemed to be possessed by a demon. The demon specifically requested to see Peter. After Peter arrives here, the doctor tells Peter that the person who wants to see him is a girl. The girl's symptoms are similar to epilepsy or schizophrenia. She was previously accused of murder. When the body was discovered, the victim's head was twisted and hung on a tree. After Peter met the girl who is possessed, the girl first spoke in the voice of a demon and repeated what the Mexican bishop had said earlier. Then she switched back to the voice of a girl and repeated what Peter had said to the doctor. Peter was stunned when he heard this. He didn't understand how the girl knew about these things. The demon told Peter, we have known each other for a long time. Then she taunted Peter. Peter felt insulted and ended the conversation. Peter suspected that this demon was likely related to the previous exorcism. The demon used the same tone then. He didn't want to get involved with this matter anymore. However, 
Just as he was about to refuse, the possessed girl's mother came to him and begged. It turned out that the girl's mother was Mary. The girl in the prison was their child. In the middle of the night, Peter suddenly found himself unable to move. At that moment, the door to the room suddenly opened. He struggled to turn his head to the side, but there was nothing at the door. The bedsheet on the other side bulged up as if someone was hiding inside. Since Peter couldn't move his body, so he could only close his eyes and pray. After a moment, Peter's body finally regained its freedom. The figure from earlier has also disappeared. At this moment, there are hands grabbed his neck. The man who looked like Jesus appeared again. But soon, everything around Peter returned to normal. Although Peter received funding, children still died in the hospital every day, and the doctors couldn't find the cause. Peter had no other choice. So early the next day, he applied for an exorcism to the bishop in the Mexican region. According to the proper procedure, they had to submit the application to headquarters for approval. However, the bishop believed that the girl might not be able to hold on. So he encouraged Peter to proceed boldly, assuring that he would handle anything from headquarters. Considering the previous mistakes in exorcisms, Peter decided to find a helper this time. He wanted to find Holt, who had previously opposed him performing exorcisms alone. That night, Peter burned the footage he had taken during the exorcism. It was the only evidence of his wrongdoing. It turns out that Mary did not willingly kiss the priest at that time. She had fallen into a coma. The demon sensed Peter's impure thoughts towards the girl, and under the influence of the demon, they engaged in something indescribable. It was only after Peter finished that he found an opportunity to drive the demon out of his body. Mary and her family are unaware of the truth. Holt sensed his concerns, and Peter told him about the encounters with Jesus. After listening, Holt felt that Peter might be the true target of the demons. It turns out that over 2,000 years ago, the demon Babel had the intention of possessing Christ, but it did not succeed. Babel is a demon of noble lineage, with a large following in hell. Nowadays, demons are constantly entangling Peter, and he is likely part of their future plans. Holt also specifically reminds Peter that we must ensure that we have not done anything wrong, as it could cost us our lives. On the other side, a nun is saying her bedtime prayers. While she is praying, she suddenly notices blood dripping onto her face. In the blink of an eye, the statue of the Virgin Mary disappears. Following the trail of blood on the ground, she sees a white cloth not far away. When she opens it, she discovers a dead infant wrapped inside. The nun is frightened and takes a few steps back. At this moment, a mysterious figure is approaching from behind, and nearby statues are also oozing tears of blood. The nun suddenly turns around, sensing something abnormal, but she finds nothing behind her. She gets up to leave. But as soon as she reaches the door, a force pulls her into the darkness. Soon, the children in the room are awakened by sounds, and the door is quickly broken down. The nun who was dragged away earlier is now possessed by a demon. The screams of the children catch the attention of Peter and Holt, as the possessed nun approaches the children step by step. At a critical moment, Mary suddenly appears. She successfully holds the nun back. Peter and Holt, who arrived, also drive away the demon. Peter realizes that the demon has indeed been driven away, but the children have developed rashes on their faces. If they don't find the cause soon, the children here will soon die inexplicably. Holt suspects that the children's illness may be related to the demon, so they go to the prison overnight to investigate. They see the girl crying one moment, and then she starts to make demonic sounds. Peter wishes to kill the demon immediately, but Holt appears calmer. Holt smiles and says to the demon, Prove to us that you are the devil. If you can't prove it, we don't need to waste time with you. After saying that, he intends to leave. At that moment, the prison cell door suddenly closes. Then the demon spits out thick liquid towards Holt, and the liquid contains a prison guard's severed finger. Holt continues to mock and says, Even if you are a demon, you must be the least capable one. The demon is instantly enraged, and Holt uncontrollably kneels on the ground. The devil asks, Have you forgotten about the agreement between us? Holt falls to the ground in pain. Peter sees the situation spiraling out of control, so he immediately starts praying, but the devil doesn't react until Holt, enduring the pain, joins in the prayer. Only then does the devil show signs of discomfort. Initially, they thought they had the situation under control, but the next second, it breaks free from its chains. It bites off Holt's ear directly. Throughout the process, Peter seems to have no effect. In the end, they defeat it with the help of the doctor's sedatives. 
The doctor suggests that they can use medication, and if all the prisoners are put to sleep, it can achieve the goal. Then Holt reminds Peter that Babel is a deceptive demon, and he shouldn't believe anything related to it. It is skilled at manipulating human fears. And most importantly, Peter must not make a deal with it. On the other side, with the company of the prison guard, the doctor injects sedatives into the prisoners. However, they didn't notice that one of the prisoners took the opportunity to steal the keys to the cell. Then Peter realizes that what Holt prepared is not ordinary holy water. The traditional rituals have no effect on the demon Babel. In the evening, Mary and Peter talk about their daughter. Peter apologizes to Mary for what happened in the past. Mary believes that their daughter is the best gift from God. For many years, Peter has carried guilt in his heart. In fact, he fell in love with Mary a long time ago. The two of them embrace each other tearfully. After the warden makes arrangements, they prepare to evacuate. The doctor chooses to stay to help. The lights in the prison suddenly go out. He goes to check and finds that all the doors to the cells are open. Peter and Holt realize that the possessed girl is nowhere to be found. At that moment, strange noises come from above his head, but when he looks up, there is nothing on the ceiling. They have just relaxed when the cell door suddenly closed. Peter and Holt are trapped in the cell. On the other side, the doctor finds that all the prisoners in the cell are missing. The only remaining prison guard has been brutally killed. In the distance, the sound of a woman crying can be heard. The doctor approaches to examine and realizes that the woman is clearly not normal. He prepares to give her another injection, but another person, looking fierce, charges at him from behind. After the doctor is attacked and falls down, the door on Peter's side opens. It seems like the demon intentionally wants to separate them and deal with individually. Shortly after, the doctor crawls out from the darkness, using his last bit of strength to warn Peter to leave quickly. Three people possessed by demons appear behind them, including the woman who attacked the doctor. Holt successfully suppresses the three demons, but Peter has no effect on his side. He is even mocked by the demon. Then, a statue-like demon appears, and with a slight movement of its finger, the cross in Holt's hand instantly heats up. Holt prepares an even larger cross to confront the demon. However, at that moment, the woman who attacked the doctor suddenly charges at them. The doctor appears again and, using his last bit of strength, pushes the woman away, successfully buying Peter and himself some time to escape. However, he falls under the demon's knife. Peter and the others desperately try to escape, but the demon takes control of Holt, and he is stabbed. The prisoners in the prison become restless, and they can only temporarily hide in the kitchen. Holt angrily questions Peter about what he has been hiding, realizing that Peter's prayers have no effect on the demon. This suggests that Peter must have some sins not confessed yet. Peter confesses the truth about the exorcism ritual they had performed earlier, which angers Holt greatly. He resents Peter for not confessing earlier. They can no longer be opponents of demons. It turns out that Holt was also hiding something. Holt was forced to make an agreement with the demon to save people. The price was that his soul belongs to the devil after death. Holt, knowing that he is about to die, specifically reminds Peter. He warns Peter that Babel will use his weaknesses to tempt him, and emphasizes that he must remember that God and the devil cannot simultaneously inhabit one person's body. After Holt finishes speaking, he prepares himself for his impending death. The kitchen door has already been forced open by the demon, and Peter can only escape on his own. Peter is well aware that the first thing he needs to do is confess his sins and complete his repentance. Since the footage of the exorcism from 18 years ago has been destroyed, he decides to record a video using his phone. In the video, Peter truthfully confesses his act of violating the person possessed during the exorcism 18 years ago. Although he was indeed under the control of the demon at that time, the root cause was his own wicked thoughts. Peter sends the confession video to the bishop. In order to verify the effectiveness of his repentance, he opens the door and confronts the demon voluntarily. He sees the possessed person charging towards him, but Peter swiftly takes out the cross, the enemy to instantly fall in agony. He finally realizes that God's protection has returned. At this moment, the possessed man reappears. He first drops the cross and the man pounced on Peter again. However, when Peter raises the cross in his hand, the man is instantly forced to retreat. Originally, Peter intended to completely drive away the demon, but suddenly a figure appears behind him. She strikes Peter unconscious abruptly. When he woke up again, he found himself tied to a chair. The chair was originally prepared by him and Holt. The devil had placed many candles on the ground. Peter's daughter pressed the inverted cross to Peter's forehead. 
Her goal was to drive out the god inside Peter's body, so that the devil can proceed with their plans. They want to turn the entire world into hell. The devil sprinkled blood on Peter. And Peter immediately felt a burning pain. It was just like the holy water sprinkled by the priests during exorcisms. Meanwhile, the nun suddenly woke up. The children's condition worsened rapidly. She intended to seek help outside, but the door wouldn't open. Then the statue-like demon appeared again. Meanwhile, the demons in the prison were also expelling God. Peter realized that he needed to do something to resist, so he actively called upon God. He launched a counterattack against the demon in front of him. The windows shattered instantly, and those demons fell to the ground in agony. Among them, the only one who could still stand, was Babel, who was attached to Peter's daughter. It turns out Peter had the protection of God, and Babel had the support from hell. On the other side, the nun was being choked by the statue demon from a distance, but she didn't give up. She tore off the cross and resisted it. In an instant, the demon was suppressed. Babel in front of Peter was also affected. The statue-like demon and Babel were connected, and Babel fell to the ground. Originally, Peter wanted to drive all the demons back to hell, but at this moment, the demon threatened Peter, saying that either the children, including his daughter, would be sacrificed, or he would have to immediately let God leave his body. Peter understood very well what this meant. He decided to accept the demon's conditions. With their contract sealed, the demon immediately left his daughter's body. The critically ill children in the hospital recovered their health. After dawn, Peter successfully rescued his daughter. He not only received gratitude from Mary, he also attracted the attention of international media. Peter became a saint in the hearts of believers. Subsequently, the bishop of the Mexican region came to congratulate him. Peter intended to ask him if he had watched the video he sent. However, the bishop did not report this matter to his superiors. He has also deleted the video. The Vatican headquarters heard about Peter's deeds. They also offered him a special advisory position. Peter can also be considered to have entered the upper echelons of the church. At this moment, his daughter suddenly came to him for a blessing, but their contact made Peter feel uncomfortable. After completing the blessing, Peter watched his daughter leave. A different gleam appeared in Peter's eyes. The bishop, witnessing this scene, immediately congratulated Babel on finally getting his wish. The bishop of the Mexican region had been a member of the devil's circle, possessed by the demon. Peter also noticed the change in his daughter. It turned out that after the demon obtained Peter's body, God chose his daughter instead. Shortly after, Peter took office in the Vatican. At that moment, a voice said that a nation without God, they would inherit the whole world. The movie, The Exorcism of God, ends here. Father Holt said not to make deals with the devil. The devil is hidden in the Vatican. These all reflect the male lead's actions and the final ending. In the end, the demons performed a ritual of driving away the god. This makes the whole movie unique. The male lead and Father Holt both feel guilty towards God. The inner workings of the Vatican have long been corrupted by the devil. In the end, God reigns over heaven while the devil controls the earthly realm. The film does not follow the conventional structure of exorcism movies. It is somewhat forced that the male lead and the possessed person have a daughter. This shows that the priest himself is a flawed character. In fact, this also illustrates that people have dual natures, and regardless of their beliefs, they can oscillate between evil and goodness. The reason the devil made a deal with the male lead is, because it has its people within the Vatican, and it is not worried about losing control over the collapsing faith of humanity. All right, that concludes today's film commentary. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you in the next episode.